between the storm clouds in your past. It's like no time has passed. Come Paul on, Brent. man. Come on. Um, 1996, can we start there? Okay. Remember, you remember the album you released? I do. Um, it had I Do on it. It did. It did. It did. <laughs> oh, oh, just a little number one called I Do, no big deal. Um, that was, uh, w- what did you want to accomplish back then? I mean, we're going to get to the oh, journey. Man. Obviously, that's where I'm going. But mm-hmm. what, what, was the, what was the game plan? Calm Before the Storm. Yeah. Um, that song was a song that I ended up um, winning a talent contest with. And it got uh, recognized um, by the labels, started getting phone calls, getting some interest. Did you have a day job then? Uh, yeah, I was still working at the Alberta Children's Hospital. You were okay. I was an RN there yep. doing that. And it was, I don't know what I was trying to accomplish. I just thought, this is amazing. People are paying attention to me, doing what I love to do. And what Garth's doing looks pretty cool. Why don't yeah. I try that? You know, and I mean, th- I think that that was kind of the extent of it. And then the dreams just kept getting bigger, you know. So, uh, it, yeah, that was kind of the one that got things started. I don't know. Is it, it People say that. I don't know if the dreams, not to change the words yeah, that yeah. you just said, but the reality got bigger than yeah. the dream. Well, you start to realize what you actually can accomplish and what kind of an opportunity has been put in front of you. Yeah. And, 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 you know, for me, that really began with the trips uh, overseas, going to developing countries, seeing more of the world. I remember, you know, me and Liz got married and she comes down to Nashville and, you know, we set up shop and, and we have our little honeymoon, get the apartment going. And then she gets on a bus with me and 11 smelly musicians and we do 180 shows a year and we're like all over the place. Yeah. Right. And just our whole world opened up and it was like, wow, we can do some things here musically and also just personally and through phil- philanthropy to do things that are really going to change people's lives. And it's been just amazing. Beyond the sunset, place that we ain't been, and you won't ever get to be unless we go on the journey. Okay, so we, we find ourselves, um, is that 22 years after? Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's, we're 22 good years now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not. Um, the journey. Yes. Uh, it is, it's, it's, I guess you're old enough, you got enough miles on you. Uh, we both do yeah, now man. at the, the, this point in our lives. You got kids, and you've had um, ups and downs and all around. Yeah. And it's it's about it's you know it always bugs me when when a, a young actor or a young a person who's just uh, uh, having a taste of success for the first time writes an autobiography. <laughs> I'm like you 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 don't deserve to do that. <laughs> it's a yet. Short book. It's a short <laughs> right. Uh, you know I've been dreaming about this my whole life. You're 14. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Um, but now is. You're you're allowed to write something to have a piece of work called the journey. I think. Well, don't you? I don't know. I look. At, it all happened on a journey for me. Yeah. I, I actually a li- literal physical journey. I remember, um, you know, for me, getting inspired has a lot to do with that downtime and kind of filling the well and 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 doing things that are inspiring. And one of the things that's the most inspiring to me, road trips. I love taking road trips yeah. and anything in nature. If I can get out there and be in the mountains or see something that I've never seen before, and and uh, so I drove my motorcycle. I went all the way down to Phoenix, Arizona. And and then I took off and we went up the Pacific Coast Highway on the way back to Alberta. Okay. And uh, we stopped in the Redwoods and Joshua Tree through the desert, you know, overlooking the, you know, just the beautiful ocean scenes. Inspirational points, in- all of them. Oh, incredible, yeah. right? And and uh, I was thinking about, you know, what you're talking about, like those ups and downs and the moments that you have along the way. And one of the, the peaks for me was Alberta Bound. Yeah. I mean, when Alberta Bound happened, it was like, it honestly, it totally shocked me. I'm Alberta Bound. Yes. I wrote that song out of my, like, just pure love for Alberta and everything that it represents to me. And I thought, yeah, maybe they'll play this in Calgary and Edmonton and, you know, Lethbridge maybe. And then all of a sudden it blows up. And um, I was thinking about that and thinking about how the first 10 years uh, of my career were spent in Nashville and traveling. And then, you know, ever, ever since then, this last 12 years or so, we've been based back in Calgary. And it's almost like there's two chapters, right? There's two volumes to it. And I was thinking about that, thinking about how when I take the trip back to Nashville and I'm writing with people and hanging out down there with my friends, uh, I always had that baggage tag on my guitar case. And it's got six letters on it. YYC BNA. Yeah. Uh, YYC airport code for Calgary. BNA, Barry Field was the airport code in Nashville. And I thought, what if I wrote Alberta Bound in reverse? What would happen? 
And I started thinking about that, and the song started to come together. There's a line in the song that says, once you take that trip, you ain't coming back the same. And it's true. Like, it's changed everything in my life. And so we put that on, on this first EP, but we've separated it into two volumes, right? So there's the, the Journey YYC Volume 1, the Journey BNA Volume 2, and I'm so stoked about it and just excited to share these songs with everybody. I just love that you're able to have the objectivity to think about your own work and be inspired by your own work, to think about a, a moment in your life. <laughs> Am I thinking about myself too no, highly, no, maybe? No, <laughs> I inspire me. <laughs> I was so great then. Oh, that was a oh, moment was of greatness, good, uh... that Alberta bound. <laughs> It broke provincial oh, lines. Man. It did everything. People in Ontario are saying I love it's... me. Enough about me. You talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> what a great anecdote. Now you tell one. Um, but just that that idea that a song that was so important to your career, mm-hmm. um, that you decided to, to revisit it a bit. Because, I mean, you have to play it a lot. Yep. Whenever you go out and play anywhere yep. live, yep. you're playing it. So you live that song every day, even though it came out all those years ago. Totally. So that totally makes sense that you would be inspired by it and to be to be able to think about well, it in a different I, way. Yeah, I remember, you know, uh, having this discussion early in my career and, and uh, having, you know, writers and label people and, and producers say, don't ever record a song that you are not so in love with that you couldn't sing it the rest of your life. Because if it becomes a hit, it better be real. It better be what you believe and what you think and, and what moves you. And, and I'll tell you, you know, Alberta Bound, that was an easy one for me yeah. to get moved with and, and uh, you know, just kind of pour everything about who I am into it. And I try, you know, when I'm writing now, um, I started doing this um, probably about five or six years ago. I asked two questions. Is it a great story? Yeah. And does the world need this? And, and if I can answer those questions with the song, man, that's, I, to me, I think we've, we're doing something special. And I tried to do that on all the songs on this project. Oh, more people should take, should use those two rules. <laughs> really, honestly. It's pretty good, right? Does uh, the world need this? Because, I mean, that often, if you're pouring through new releases and new releases and new releases, and yeah. you look at titles and things, you're like, okay, well, there's a lot of fun confections out there that just, but, but give me something with some meat. Give well, me something with some meat. I, I like that. And I, at the same time, I want to make sure that, um, like every great story has its ups and downs and it has sort of like a flow to it. Yeah. I think great shows, great, uh, albums, everything, it has that arc to it and it can't all be serious and heavy no. either. You want to make sure that you got like, yeah, this is like yeah. really, you know, moving me. And at the same time, it's like, can I bob my head and drive fast to this? Then yes, this is cool. So we tried to do that. And, and I think because we were only answering those two questions during the project you know great story does the world need it um we ended up with like stylistically everything from you know pop infused stuff for all about her upcoming one with uh, uh brad rempel who co-wrote on it uh bittersweet which i'm really stoked about to more outlaw sounding stuff yep. and, and even singer songwriter so kind of you know hit the whole gamut for country music and I, I was excited about the way that turned out Okay, so uh, I started by asking you about uh, the journey, and it wasn't that long ago that you and I were talking about, um, uh, well, uh, about a, a couple of songs that you released that were not part of an album, and you and you said to me, I don't know if I'm going to release another album. We don't know kind of the yeah. way the world is now, and then you put them together as a collection, which is great, um, and now you have now you're back to doing an album, which I'm happy about because I'm an album guy, but I'm old, so like <laughs> right, so but 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 really, I yeah. mean, do you find that that maybe were you doing like uh, focus groups and saying do people no. want albums or is this just what you want to put out yeah I think it just it felt like this was something that had kind of all of a sudden come together I think if there's a common thread on these 12 songs that we've just recorded um, it's about perseverance yeah. um, it's about you know putting one foot in front of the other and and moving forward you know um, I always like this there's this image um, and I love this vision a, a person, you know, walking along a pathway in the dark and you're, you're carrying, you know, a, a lantern and you're walking along. You can't see anything that's going on around you, but you can see your feet and one step ahead. Yeah. And I've always loved that image, right? And of just you just keep on moving ahead a little bit at a time. And, and that's kind of what this whole thing has been about for me for this, you know, this whole career. And, and I wanted to... I wanted to hopefully write a body of work that was going to encourage people because I really feel like, you know, right now the world's moving at such a pace yeah. and, and it can be challenging. And I think that for a lot of people, you know, you talk about mental health issues and, and things that people are dealing with today, it seems more and more. Um, it requires that we get together in community and that we encourage each other. And music's a great way to do that. 
And an album is a is a great way. You're talking about pace and the frenetic kind of pace of, slow of it life. Down, an plug album it in, is right? a yeah. way to slow down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta listen to it. Absolutely, and I I love that part of it. So you know, I mean, people are gonna access music in a million different ways. I think you put this out in a in a way where it is a collection that is best listened to all at once. Yeah. And uh, and you just you put it out there and see what happens. Okay, so 12 tracks on YYC. No, there's six on YYC. There's six, six on the other one. So oh, 12 gotcha. total 12 for total. the whole collection. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and uh, and actually you start to kind of see online. I know you guys are circulating some of this stuff behind us right yeah. now. But like uh, the, the photos along the way, there's this great photographer, Tanner uh, Wendell Stewart, uh, who's um, uh, an Instagram star, an amazing guy from the Pacific Northwest that I met. He tagged along on this trip that we took. And it was funny. Like you would have seen me in a, in a position like this on the side of an interstate. Yeah. I just get off my bike. I take off all my gear. I'm like pulling my pants on on the side of the interstate to get a picture in my cowboy duds and then back on the bike again and we take off to the next place. And it was it was an amazing adventure and I think he, he captured some amazing stuff on That's the trip. That's a great way to fun. do it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like a great way to do it. So we couldn't talk about it before, but now we can talk about this. You're working with Lindsay L. Yeah, so there's there's this one song. I, I called Brad Rempel with High Valley and I was like, you know, man, I'm coming to Nashville. I want to see you guys and hang out and it'd be great if we could do some writing together. Did they, do they have time for their old well, pal Well, he's like, listen, I'm a little bit busy. I'm a little bit no, uh, no, he's great. huge now. No, and, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he um, he introduced me to a couple of guys he's been writing with Seth Mosley and Ben yeah. Stennis, amazing guys, yep. and I, I love them to death. And and when I walked in the first time, I didn't know them, and you're like bearing your soul to these new strangers. But we came up with all about her. The second day, Brad was able to come in and actually uh, be a part of the writing session as well, and we came up with a song called Bittersweet. And I'm so excited about the way that it turned out. Holding on, letting go, wide open, slow. Then somewhere those rivers meet in a place called Bittersweet. It's just one of those songs that um, you can tap your foot to and it has a little bit of meat to it at the same time. Yep. And uh, I thought, man, th that'd be so cool if we could get Lindsay to be a part of this in some way. So I called her up and um, and it reached out actually uh, through our uh, social media channels and, and she got right back. We started chatting a little bit and, I, and she's playing some amazing guitar on this. It's just It's pretty special, just incredible. Pretty good uh, what's happening in our little Canadian country music industry these days. I'll isn't tell you it? what. Yeah, the I mean, Valley I, Boys and Lindsay L. Absolutely. And George it, and Gord. And, so yeah. exciting. You know, I think that, uh, you know, country music in Canada is alive and well. And it's it's great because the borders have come down in so many ways yeah. now. And uh, we can uh, we can export this great music to the world. And, and it's a great community. People, they really care about each other. And, and uh, it's uh, it's a wonderful thing to be a part of. And a lot, a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the kids have been connected to you over the years, and, and you know, with Jess, obviously, with your your single, and and uh, and the High Valley guys living in your barn. <laughs> <laughs> you actually like giving them a place oh, to stay. Man. They're they're just amazing, and, yeah. and I think the thing I love the most about them is just their incredible work ethic. They just don't quit. They go and go and go, and and uh, have have been do doing making amazing music, and really found a sound that now the world is paying attention yeah. to. And and you know people like Jess, I mean, just world class, you know. And and uh, we're pretty spoiled up here in Canada. I think so. Yeah. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Good Very to see good. you. Good yeah, man. You.